Welcome to Be Kind Entertainment. Today we have one of the smoothest voices on the radio. He co-hosts The Rush on News Talk 1010. And he is my guest. Welcome to J Mad Dog Michaels. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. This is great. I love how many names you have. Sometimes it's a mouthful. But I always get it out. Depending on when you look at look at my career, it was either Mad Dog or J Mad Dog or just J Michaels. Depending on how the audience researched it, depending on the name. All right. And you prefer Jay? <laughs> Let's go Jay today. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with both. I'm good with either, actually. You know, they're, they're, they both have their own story behind them. So I'm, I'm cool with both. So, Jay, you have done so much volunteer work. You're very active and you've given a platform with you using your celebrity, shining a light on other, I guess, charities. Now, how has <clears throat> the importance of kindness changed since your son had a major stroke in 2012? Um, you know, I don't think it really changed at all, honestly, because oh. previous to, previous to my son Ashton having having his stroke, we were super active with a number of charities because I've been doing the Sick Kids Radiothon for, gosh, I guess a decade and a half now, a couple years off, a couple years on when I was back and forth with, uh, with Bell in various incarnations. And previous to that, my younger son, Dustin, had taken part in a number of programs at Sick Kids as well for um, cognitive behavioral therapy. And my son, a younger son, I call him younger, but he's like 27, 28 now. He uh, has, has Tourette. So we were very active with the Tourette Foundation of Canada. We made a, we made a film with them. We took place in a lot of, took part in a lot of uh, sort of get togethers and met a lot of other parents who had kids with Tourette. It was a real educational thing for me. We did stuff with um, the various papers in town. So with Ashton, it was just sort of a continuation of that where we ended up working with epilepsy because as a result of, of his stroke, he ended up with, he lost 50% of his vision in both eyes. He ended up with epilepsy, <clears throat> excuse me, which was a byproduct that I didn't know of with strokes. So mm-hmm. we, we were, it was a very much a learning, a learning thing. And, you know, I'm, I have a super supportive partner, my wife, Sherry, who is, you know, I'm kind of the guy that, that shows up and rides the bike and, and does the emceeing and stuff like that. And my wife's the person that reads the books and learns about everything so that I sound informed when I talk about it because you know she's she really digs in as moms tend to do they tend to really learn as much as possible that's how they sort of cope and so through that we've we've worked with because my son my older son Ashton also has a, a dog a guide dog we went through the program in Oakville mm-hmm. with uh, guide dogs of Canada where you actually live at the facility for three weeks oh wow with your kid with the dog and you learn how to, you train the dog alongside of your, of your child. And that was a real eye-opening experience for me because uh, we lived there, like we lived in a dorm situation. So every day we got to watch you know, the dog be trained and our son to learn. So yeah, it's never really stopped. You know, we've been involved with uh, the Purple Party of Canada, which is a big thing for childhood cancer. And Yannick Bisson from Murdoch Mysteries and his wife Chantal, who um, have been long, long time friends because oddly enough, um, Ashton dated one of their daughters back in high school. And we remain friends because, you know, kids in romance in high school, they t- tend not to laugh. <laughs> so they invited us to be part of that. So we were part of that for a couple, for a number of years and we were on their board as well. So yeah, it seems like, you know, every year there's another opportunity to sort of lend your voice. And it's one of the easiest things in the world to do because it really is such a reciprocal thing. I've never worked with a charity where I didn't get just as much out of it as, as I put into it. So it's, it's never not rewarding. That's always my... Re- when I talk to young broadcasters, it's like, you're going to be, you're going to be encouraged to take part in charity work, but don't look at it like work because you'll get far more out of it than you could ever imagine. And I've, I've always been right. Cause I know it's just one of those things that, you know, you know, this as well. It's just, you know, it's just so good to be able to help people. And, and it matters to be kind during all this. Like you've had uh, obviously a busy, busy career and you still manage to, to do all this volunteering and shine a light on all these charities. So when people say they don't have time, what do you say? I think it's easier now than ever. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right. You and I, the, you and I, the, I, I did, I did back-to-back shows all last week. I did, the, I did the morning show on Chum FM. And I did News Talk 1010. My voice kept up through last week, but it's this week that it's just starting to, to come back and to haunt me because I, I drove it so hard. So if I'm a little hoarse, I, I apologize. I, I think, I think it's just as easy now, if not easier to take, to be charitable and to, and to be kind and to work with, because I mean, because you get the Zoom component now, right? You right, can reach right. out to people through that. And we've also got a little bit more time in our hands to, to devote to the things. And as we see things open up, I think a lot of people's priorities have changed completely with how they live their lives and how thankful they are about their communities. Like I even noticed this past weekend, 
in the beach when we had all the fireworks and all the garbage wow. and stuff like that, you know, instead of seeing people complaining about, you know, rotten kids coming from outside the neighborhood, it was people down at the beach with their kids picking up garbage. Right. And, you know, why are we here, Jacob? Well, we're here, dad, because we're going to pick up litter because people didn't put their litter in the garbage. That's right. And what are we learning? We're learning to put away. And I was like, if that's not the best message in the world to teach your kid right now, I can't, I can't think of one. So, yeah. So the opportunities are there. It's just a matter of, you know, taking them and it's, it's easier to do than ever. So over your long career, what have you found personally with your idea of kindness and empathy and charity? What was there a moment that you were like, this is what I need to be doing more of? Um, I think really through sick kids, I think just from not just hearing the stories from the kids, but what really struck me was the brothers and the sisters and the parents, mm. because what happens with children who are very sick is the parents are so incredibly devoted to that child that sometimes you'd see the other kid in the background, he's just kind of sitting because they're always left out. So I would always make it a point to involve them in the conversation. It's like, yeah, but how are you doing? It right. must be hard because your sister's always sick and, and that's okay. That you need attention and it's okay that you need, you know, a little bit of love as well. So I've always gravitated towards charities with kids, you know, especially, especially through, through sick kids. And, you know, I, I worked with, I worked with kids that I did the telethon with for seven or eight years who, there's a girl named Jaden who I met at the very first purple party I ever went to. And um, Yannick was um, hosting from, from Murdoch. And she, she gravitated to me because she listened to my radio show. And he was like, well, this isn't fair. Like I'm on TV. You shouldn't like, you shouldn't like him. So it was very funny. And her and I became fast friends and I got to know her mom really well. And she became a spokesperson. She, wow. you know, she, she called herself wonder girl, super girl, super girl, Jaden. And she had, she was um, the most radiated child in Canada. She'd had more treatments than any other child in Canadian history. She passed, I think, two years ago now. So the first year that you're at the event and, and you know, she's thinking about it now and that she's not there, like that stuff, that stuff sticks with you, right? These kids and, and how much they suffer, yet how tirelessly they work for other children. So it's, you know, if you don't, if, if you're not pulled in immediately right. by something like that, I don't know, I don't know what's going to that's going to pull you in, but everybody's got their niche, right? It can be the environment. It could be carbon, carbon, carbon taxes, carbon gas emissions. It could be, you know, nuclear waste. It could be infectious diseases that come out of COVID that you want to, have. but there's so many opportunities to do it. I just encourage everybody to, to do one, even if you just show up at an event and support it, like you don't have to all of a sudden be the chairman of the committee, right? You can just go to the <laughs> event and watch it and think to yourself, I think I want to be more involved in this. And sometimes that's how it starts for people. And I think when people talk about it openly like this and how easy it is to get involved, I think it's just the first step to take it and then yeah. try it and then go with it, right? Find your passion, find your spark. And, and there you are, give your time and, and give your heart. I, I think at the end of the day, and to your point, it yeah. gives back so much to you. So what I love seeing is that we know each other socially and I know your lovely wife yeah. and I've had some experiences with her and we were doing a, a, a party for a friend of ours, a fundraiser who was, wasn't feeling well. Yeah, the first thing she did, she said, <clears throat> I'm on flowers. I, and she didn't uh, wait for anyone to delegate. And I thought, wow, it's so lovely to see a couple when you see them out that they're doing stuff. But when they are private, they do the same thing. And it's refreshing. I mean, obviously, I see you down the streets and you guys are holding hands and you're very family oriented. <laughs> and it's lovely to see. And your posts. And I think, wow, they are really living the same way they live on the radio, in the public. And that is such yeah. a lovely, maybe Canadian thing to see. And it, and it warms your heart. It, you're not doing it for show. You're not doing it for money. It's exactly who you are. I remember when we moved here to Toronto, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I, I was talking on my show about, you know, my, my house near Queen and Woodbine. Right. I shut the microphone off and my host said, what do you, my co-host said, what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? They said, you don't tell people where you live because they'll come to your house. <laughs> and sure enough, it would happen. Like little kids would For come real? and knock on the door. Does Mad Dog live here? And my wife would be like, yeah, but he's napping right now. And it just became known that I, I was just a beacher. I was just a guy on the beach. And, you know, if I went and hosted a lip sync competition or did something at a school, I'd go and, and be that guy on the radio. But most of the time I was just with my kid at lacrosse or waiting for my other son at an audition. And I just... Yeah, I just, it's, if, if you are one person on the radio and a different person in your real life, that's just so much work. It's just so much right, easier to be the same person all the time. I'd just rather be <laughs> yeah. that guy. Just kind of, and when you get older, sometimes it's hard to remember who you are, right? The older you get, you're yeah. like, oh, 
where am I? Who am I today? Right. But isn't that also a great when, testament that people knock on your door and they're like, and what are they going to say? Hey, mad dog, I, I love your show. Like, Hey, like that's yeah. such a compliment. So Canadian to say, what's up? Do you want to go have a beer or whatever, you know? <laughs> and that's the thing about the beach too. And that's the thing about Toronto, I think, is there's so many people that work in that industry that yeah. after a while it, you're, it's not as impressive. Because you've seen yeah. the guy at Tim Hortons a hundred times, you know what I mean. But it's impressive when they're <clears throat> kind. That's what's impressive. To your point, That's we see point, everyone man. all the time. But when I see when nobody's looking and the cameras aren't rolling, the radio isn't on, and when they're kind and you just happen to catch a whatever, it warms your heart. And then. Thank you. That's that's incredibly nice. And you know, I I I share just as much of that credit with my wife. And my kids, you know, we've always, I think it might be that because we're East Coasters, we're from Nova Scotia, we, um, yeah. family values, simple values, home and heart and food and fun. It's literally oh, like that it. kind of, that kind of thing. Like my wife, one of her, you know, it's harder right now inside of what we're inside of, but you know, her, one of her sayings has been like, every day can be a party if you want it to be, you know, right. it doesn't have to be Cinco de Mayo. It can just be Taco Tuesday. Like you have to, you have to celebrate the small things and enjoy the small things in life. And that's the kind of thing that I think really served us well during all of this is that she's always been my best friend. So oh. when I talk to other couples that are like, we're going to kill each other. It's like, well, <laughs> my wife, we, my wife and I have been training for the pandemic for 30 years. <laughs> we were ready. For <laughs> we'll just play, we'll just, we'll just play more. We'll just play more crib. <laughs> so not, so this is right up your alley, is it? Yeah, we're used to it. Like last year we went to our cottage oh. in Nova Scotia and because of quarantine, we had to, we couldn't leave we couldn't leave for two weeks. Couldn't leave the property for two weeks. Yeah. And it was great. We loved it. Like we never had a, a moment, not even, a, not a single argument. Just wow. Like, what do you want, what do you want to walk down, walk to the beach, walk back, play cards, cook food, hang right. out. I mean, there's worse places to be than on the ocean for two weeks, but right. it wasn't. An, so that, that's a big, a big part of it too. And you can, you know, you instill that in your children, right? How important it is to, to give back and to just be pure of heart. It also helpful when you don't have the kids with you, right? There, when you have yes. a moment just to yourself because I feel like we've had a lot of family time in the last few months a lot of family time and I love it but I, it would be nice to have some adult time too right so you've got to factor that we, in so we just we just moved into the place that we're in now <clears throat> excuse me in December so this right. is the first time Sherry and I have ever lived alone ever <laughs> ever like and our kids are 31 and like 28 <laughs> 27 but this is this has been uh, like like we, the last place we had was like a house. So my son had the bottom and we had the top, but right. we still cohabitated, right? And his girlfriend lived with us too. And so that was, that had its challenges during, during all of this, especially where, you know, you like, are you going to see people? Are you, are you following right. the rules? What are your rules? What are you right. going to do this weekend? Are you like, so you had to, there had to be a lot of patience, I think on everybody's part. I mean, even now you're looking at like, are you afraid to talk about being in someone's backyard? Even if you're distanced, do you, do you say that you're seeing your mom? Like right. We're still finding our way, our way out of it. It's certainly been uh, very informative for me. But it's kindness that keeps us all together and we'll get us Agreed. through this. So thank yeah. you so much for keeping us entertained, informed, and, and definitely for keeping it real. You inspire everyone when we watch your kind gestures and we appreciate them. So this is where entertainment and charity meet.